Several students and professors at Quinnipiac University are combing ponds and streams around Connecticut in search of DNA that can turn ordinary bacteria into antibiotic-resistant supergerms. These germs cause life-threatening infections that kill some 90,000 people in the United States every year. Lisa Kachara, Associate Professor of Biomedical Sciences, is spearheading the project. Well, there were two things that really intrigued me and kind of got me going. One of all things was actually an article in the New York Times. It was kind of a cartoon, and it was talking about the number of chemicals and the number of drugs that are actually in our water supplies, everything from Vi Viagra to antibiotics. And if antibiotics are in our water, then are we getting resistance because of bacteria being exposed to those antibiotics? So and the other thing is really the, the overuse of antibiotics has resulted in a lot of bacteria now becoming resistant to antibiotics. So things like MRSA are now killing more people in the United States than HIV is. 90% of the antibiotics taken by humans are excreted and end up in our water supply naturally. The other thing is that we as people and as uh, hospitals often would just flush unused antibiotics down the toilet and they would end up in our water supply. But people are not the main reason antibiotics find their way into our water supply. 70 to 90 percent of antibiotics in this country are given to animals to prevent disease outbreaks, and their excretions end up there as well. Part-time professor Kristen Wolf teaches a QU seminar class that discusses how animals raised for food are given antibiotics to prevent disease outbreaks. These antibiotics are excreted and find their way into the water supply, accounting in large part for the presence of antibiotic-resistant DNA in water. One of the figures that I read was like 300 million pounds of antibiotics per year are used in the food industry. So you have all of these antibiotics presented to these animals so that any microbes that are present either inside the animals or in the, the surrounding environment are then exposed to these antibiotics. Microbes routinely mutate so that there's a chance that they can mutate and become resistant to antibiotics. Sapna Patel is using the study for a master's thesis. She hopes to conduct studies in a university hospital someday. Along with her professors, Patel and Lindsay Maglio, a 2009 graduate, have been collecting samples from the stream adjacent to the Mount Carmel campus to analyze in the university's science labs. In the lab, students extract DNA from the samples and amplify them in a machine that makes millions of copies of a DNA sequence. So what we do is when we put the primers in with the, our extracted DNA from the water, if uh, those specific genes are present in those DNA sample that I extracted, what it's going to do in the PCR machine is that it's going to make us millions of copies. And once it comes out of the machine, we're going to be able to detect, to detect the, the presence of the resistant genes uh, on uh, electrophoresis gel. We're actually looking for pieces of DNA that would indicate that the bacteria have acquired antibiotic resistance. So what happens is as bacteria die, they actually will release free DNA and other bacteria will take up that DNA and become resistant. So a normal bacteria that's just hanging out in the water can actually just take up bacteria that is free in the water and then it can become resistant. So the genes, the actual DNA that would encode for resistance for things like ampicillin and tetracycline, penicillin, things that would actually be in the water have now encoded genes that have made these bacteria resistant. So we're actually looking for the DNA. Kuchara hopes the data they collect will be published in a peer-reviewed journal in a few years. There's a lot of people trying to get changes in our practices actually done, showing that if this DNA is actually there, what can we do about it to prevent it from getting into the water to begin with? This project is designed to get undergraduate and graduate students very involved in research. And to me, education in Quinnipiac is a very good place for being able to do this isn't just accumulating knowledge. It's not just filling your brain up with facts. It's actually inspiring people and getting them to actually find out a question. When my graduate students do a research project, they're the first person in the entire world to know the answer to that particular question that they're looking at. And that kind of sparks them to be motivated and to go on. And I think that's the real crux of education is that lighting of that fire that gets people motivated.